What's up guys, it's Smitty back with another YouTube video. This video is the third installment of my Making the Case series. In this series, I make arguments for the top 10 NBA players of all time as being the GOAT. Looking at my top 10, each of the players have a different defining trait which could justify them as the GOAT. As seen in my video titled What's Next, I revealed who my pick for the GOAT is, therefore he who shall not be named won't have another video in this series. The second video I made was on Wilt Chamberlain, who takes the number 9 spot on my list. In the video description, there will be a link to those videos if y'all are interested. Also, this series is inspired by Clayton Crowley's unfinished series on YouTube. He gets full credit for this idea. In his series, he refuses to make a video on Kobe Bryant. His reasoning is that even though Kobe is in his top 10 players of all time, he mimics Michael Jordan too much to be regarded as the GOAT. That's a fair argument, but today, I'm going to be making the case for Kobe Bryant, the number 9 player on my all-time list. Before we get into this video, it would be awesome if you can check to see if you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. It's completely free, takes about 2 seconds to do, and it really makes my channel grow. Also, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking it. It'll recommend this video to even more people. So if you'd like to help me out, make sure to smash the subscribe and the like button. Thanks guys, I really appreciate the support. Enjoy y'all! The third player in this series we're going to debate as the GOAT is the late Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace. Coming in at number 9 on my all-time list, Kobe is undoubtedly one of the NBA's greatest. The main line of reasoning for Kobe being regarded as the GOAT is his mind. Kobe Bryant is arguably the highest IQ athlete in a respected sport. Kobe's mind is the pivotal argument I'll discuss in this video, so I'm going to put it on full display. Let's first start with Kobe's career awards. This will put what Kobe Bryant achieved in his career into context. I'll be comparing his career awards side by side with the other 9 NBA greats in this series. Kobe won 5 NBA championships, received 2 finals MVPs, 1 MVP, was an 18 time NBA All-Star, 11 time NBA All First Team, 2 time NBA Second Team, 2 time Third Team, 9 time All Defensive First Team, 3 time All Defensive Second Team, and ended his career with 33,643 points, 7,047 rebounds, and 6,306 assists. Now let's compare these achievements to the 9 other players in this series. As for championships, Kobe is about average compared to the other 10 top players of all time. If you take the outlier with 11 championships out, Kobe's number of championships becomes greater than average. Therefore, Kobe's at least up to par with the all-time greats in terms of championships. As for all NBA first teams, Kobe has 11, the second most among all-time greats. The average among the top 10 is 10 all NBA first team selections. This shows how dominant Kobe was in the 2000s and how he was able to prolong it. When looking at all NBA defensive team selections, Kobe becomes an outlier. Kobe was a part of 9 all NBA defensive first teams, tied for the record. Most people say Kobe wasn't a good defender, yet they forget his dominance and prolonged defensive excellence. On defense, Kobe was always one step ahead of his opponent. The preparation Kobe put in before each game is absurd. Kobe would analyze the opposing team's offense to the point of memorizing it. He would also study the individual superstars in the league and pick out their percentages from every point on the floor, go-to moves, and tendencies. Kobe's mix of athleticism, timing, and knowledge make him an all-time great defender, yet very few people acknowledge it. This isn't the only time when Kobe uses his knowledge and competitive nature to take an advantage. On offense, Kobe is very knowledgeable, arguably even more than on defense. In an interview with his fellow friend Tracy McGrady, Kobe talks about the Houston Rockets offense in 2018 and 19. What do you think of what he's doing right now? Well, I think he, I'm not a fan of in terms of winning championships. I don't think that style is ever going to win championships. But at the same time, you have to keep your team's head above water to win games. So you have to do what you have to do to win games. And he's doing that. 
So are you saying you don't think James Harden and the Rockets, as constructed, can win a title? Not with this style of play, it won't win, right? With one player dominating the ball. Now when you have Chris Ball come back and you have more, more movement, to the offense where you move guys around where you're harder to find. And Chris now Ball's back, but you mean more in the Yeah, because listen, yeah. if you take one player, you put him at the top of the key or you put him on the wing and you're running screen rolls, you're always in front of the defense. Mm -hmm. The defense can key on that, mm -hmm. particularly in the playoffs. It's and that's easy, easy to guard. defend. Yeah. It's easy to defend. Now, what he's doing is absolutely remarkable, though. And I think um, it's, <clears> a, it's a testament to how remarkable it is because uh, people are now trying to minimize what it is that he's doing. I mean, he's doing some phenomenal stuff, man. Notice how detailed and in-depth Kobe describes the Rockets' offensive schemes. Honestly, Kobe probably knows more about offense and defensive schemes than many NBA coaches. This level of knowledge and dedication to winning makes Kobe unlike any other person ever. You could say Michael Jordan was just as knowledgeable and dedicated, but I'd beg to differ. Jordan may have been more competitive than Kobe, but there is no way Jordan studied the game more rigorously than Kobe. Kobe learned everything from MJ and added on to it. Back in MJ's day, offensive and defensive schemes weren't as complex as they are nowadays. The triangle offense was about as complex as it got. Therefore, MJ didn't have to study them that much as long as he focused on one-on-one -on -one matchups. But the 2000s defense and offensive schemes became way more diverse and Kobe was 100% up to the challenge of mastering every one. The 2000s is regarded as the most dominant defensive era in basketball, and Kobe found ways to exploit it in every single way. It wasn't a coincidence that Kobe Bryant dropped 81 points on Jalen Rose and the Toronto Raptors' heads. Because Kobe was so knowledgeable on offense, he was able to exploit literally every defender the Raptors threw at him. Looking at every NBA great, no one has been able to surpass Kobe's record of 81 points in a single game. As stated in my Wilt Chamberlain video, Wilt was able to drop 100 points in a game, but you can definitely argue it doesn't even count. This is because Wilt played in an era with minimal talent, and Wilt was able to play 48 minutes every game. When looking at other all-time great scorers, such as Michael Jordan, James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Tracy McGrady, None were on the same level as Kobe in terms of IQ. So Kobe has unmatched IQ on offense and defense, but is that all Kobe dominates with his mind? No, Kobe was also the greatest at mind games. Getting into Kobe's kitchen is literally impossible. Since he was born, Kobe literally hasn't been phased. We all know of the famous Matt Barnes altercation Kobe had. Let's take a look at that situation. As you can see, Matt Barnes is trying to disrupt Kobe Bryant in order to win. Matt Barnes is getting up close and personal with Kobe and exchanges a few words. Little does Matt Barnes know, he would become the biggest fool in NBA history. A few plays after Barnes and Kobe get a tech, Barnes tries to make Kobe flinch with the basketball while inbounding. Kobe doesn't even flinch a millimeter and makes Barnes look flat out stupid. Barnes ends up getting his second tech and fouling out of the game. Kobe's ability to remain calm, collected, and in control of his body at all times is a masterpiece. I really can't think of a more iconic moment in sports history that revolves around mind games. Tracy McGrady, one of Kobe's best friends and competitors, said that Kobe once told him he doesn't have to work out because it's the off season. Later that day, McGrady saw Kobe in the gym absolutely going ham. Kobe was willing to sacrifice everything in order to get an upper hand on his opponents, even his best friends. At one point in his career, Kobe claims that he ghosted literally everyone he knew while chasing the 2009 NBA championship. He wouldn't even talk to his family for an entire season. It's pretty clear that Kobe Bryant has a case for being regarded as the GOAT. Even though Kobe takes number 9 on my all-time list, I can't be mad at you if you're using these points in your argument. There is simply no denying that Kobe had the most knowledge in their craft of any athlete ever. It is for this reason that Kobe has the phrase Mamba mentality named after him, and that he can be regarded as the GOAT. Some people may claim Kobe was just a copycat of Michael Jordan, but I'd beg to differ. Kobe took what Michael had to offer and built on his foundation to get himself to another level. This isn't necessarily saying 
that Kobe is better than MJ, but it definitely implies that Kobe isn't just another MJ. His name is Kobe Bryant. Thank you all for watching this far into the video. If you happen to enjoy this video, please leave a like. It'll recommend this video to other people to watch. Also, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, it'll keep you up to date on all of my basketball related content. On screen will be my channel icon where you can subscribe from and another one of my videos for y'all to watch. This is Smitty, signing off.